Hi everybody, Big Nate here again. i uh, got some exciting updates for you. I'm going to walk you through how the menu system and memory functions work on the Boost Controller prototype. Uh, I'm also going to show you it functioning in a three-quarters full functional setup to show you how it works with the PID controller. Uh, I don't really have much else to say about that because this is pretty exciting and uh, it'll speak for itself. So let's get right to it. All right, everybody, here is where I'm at on the progress on the user interface on the gauge portion and the uh, control system for our boost controller slash uh, meth controller. Um, probably even AFR gauge eventually as well. Um, I'm going to have that signal in, probably be able to use that as a gauge as well. I don't see why not. Even though that's not the primary purpose, and uh, at this point I have no plans on having any live um, output. That being said, here we go. I got it fired up. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and uh, reboot here. And there it fires up very, very quickly and goes immediately to gauge. Uh, probably have some sort of splash screen once I figure out what the hell to call this thing. Uh, as of right now, in development, it just goes straight to gauge. Um, right now I have it defaulted to read PSI. Uh, I can hit the menu button and it goes to the boost start setting. Uh, right now I have it set yeah, let's see, let's go to four, and then I can save that. It's saved. Uh, if I do menu again, it'll go to boost start. Menu again, it goes to boost set. This is the set point, what we want our target boost to be. I can change that to be, oh, let's do 14.7 just for giggles. I can save that. Uh, if I want, I can change it to from uh, PSI to KPA, save that. Now we're reading KPA. Uh, we got a storm rolling in here uh, today and uh, our, our KPA is actually pretty low. Um, uh, pressure system is, is changing since last time I made a video. Uh, we were sitting at almost exactly uh, 100 kPa. Um, not unheard of. It looks like we're, we're fluctuating a little bit. Uh, 98, 97. I saw 99 a second ago. Um, so that's that. Uh, as of now, I have not uh, moved the unit setting into um, your boost start or boost set. Um, Again, PSI saved. All right, now we're back to reading PSI again. <clears throat> um, still need to um, put in some PID controller settings. Um, eventually, I want to be able to use different uh, map sensors, uh, two bar sensors, three bar sensors. Uh, the old three bar, which is different than the new three bar ZR1 that I'm using. Um, use other sensors that uh, read higher than um, so I will have uh, probably uh, pre-made selections for uh, which um, map sensor you're using um, or I will put in um, a, uh, a setting to set the curve manually so as you can see with the way this works if I remove power from the system and then power it back on there it goes and I move to my settings at 4 psi boost start and 14.7 psi boost set have been saved into the memory um, so whenever you turn the car off and on, memory is, is uh, the settings are saved in memory, um, as they should be. Um, and the same thing would be true if I had changed the PSI to KPA. Um, 
you know, very, very simple things. Like I said, this is a tiny screen. You know, it's not even half as long and not even as wide as my, my finger. Um, right now I'm gonna plan to have four button control underneath it with them labeled menu, increase, decrease, and set. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna have a max boost memory that the um, increase or decrease button will be able to um, flash back and see what your your maximum boost was since um, previous power on, uh, which will be a nice useful feature. Uh, and then there will also be a master power on and off that will um, control the unit at at uh, the 12 volt in source. So we're not relying on software on and off. Uh, there will be a, a hard on off in order to uh, uh, turn the system off if something were to go haywire. Um, so this is where we're at, making good progress. I foresee a functional prototype that's ready for installation into a car um, pretty soon. All right, I have the program up and running. I have it read in vacuum. As you can see, <clears throat> all the settings are still functional. I have my boost start at 1.5 PSI. I have the boost set at 10 <clears throat> and read in PSI. Uh, neat function I have now is that when the gauge is active, if you hit this button, it will read back to you for one second what the maximum boost was during this on time. <clears throat> so let's take a look at our test apparatus. Uh, we still have all of the same functional bits we had before, the three bar map sensor, the Arduino, all the buttons, the screen. Uh, we are using the same 35A Mac valve, my air tank down there, uh, the same wastegate from the previous video, and the pressure regulator. <clears throat> I have this routed uh, in a way that uh, gives the most dramatic view of how this functions so that I'm feeding constant pressure into the bottom port and then I am regulating using the MAC valve the pressure into the top port. As we saw in the previous video, this cracks at about seven or eight pounds. So I've picked 10 to make sure that we go above spring pressure. <clears throat> and the way I have it set up is that it is deadheading line pressure when the valve is turned off. When it's turned on, it's applying line pressure to the top of the wastegate. <clears throat> uh, as the pressure builds, it should be one-to-one -one between the bottom and the top until you meet the set point or come near it. It'll start pulsing the valve until you pass your set point. Then it will open the valve entirely, letting the pressure out. <clears throat> and at that point, the wastegate will have opened and it will change the airflow that's going into the system overall, which is the portion I'm missing from this test control. <clears throat> um, and then that will uh, give a change in back pressure in the entire system, both from the uh, turbo back pressure because the um, exhaust is now leaving from the valve side and also the boost pressure will be going down or not increasing <clears throat> due to the compressor not spinning as fast. All right, I have it set up so that you can see the um, wastegate valve and it right now is sitting on the fire ring. So there's a little bit of a gap of it being off the table. <clears throat> um, I tested this before I made the video, of course, and uh, it's pretty dramatic when it hits the set point, what it does. It's so, yeah, always being left-handed. So I'm going to increase the pressure into the system. All right, 
right, we are past boost start. You heard the click there from the valve. The solenoid has been energized, so it is applying air pressure to both the top and the bottom. We're up to about 6 psi, 7 psi. PID controller is still at maximum energy. We're at 8. Nine. We're at ten. PID control is starting to pulse. There it goes. And you can see it gets into an oscillation. And if I go and feed enough pressure into the system, there, it completely opens up the valve. Because we are way over pressure now. But of course, in real life, that would be slowing down the turbo and it would be relieving the uh, incoming boost pressure from the compressor. Turn this thing takes a while. Oh, now we're way underneath. Because again, we don't have any feedback from the other side of the system. We're getting close to the set point again. And it's doing pretty good at maintaining about 10 psi. to show you one more thing on the system <clears throat> when it is in gauge mode like I said before and I showed before um, each time it powers up it will set what the max boost it saw in the system was and it is recallable by a simple button push and max boost was 16.8 psi uh, during that test when I cranked it way way over the top to uh, completely open the valve. Um, <clears throat> again, in reality, that would dump the energy that's going into the compressor and it would come back and, you know, then the PID controller would fight the oscillations and all that fun stuff. So that is another piece of the puzzle that is fully functional. I'm gonna show you the serial monitor of the PID control uh, in action. Right now, it is not updating. Um, in fact, let me clear it. Okay. It is not functional until the boost start point is met, which is right here. And now it is reading. <clears throat> and as we increase the boost, it's still giving the same number to pulse the solenoid with until we reach close to our set point and then it starts pulsing turn it off and it starts pulsing it <clears throat> less and less and less and less and less until it is essentially closed because we're way over and then as the boost comes back, it changes the output until we get close, and then if we're close, <clears throat> it changes it slightly until we go over, and then it'll change it again because we're over. we get it super super close to what the set point is and keep it pretty steady and the number does not change by much it very slowly grows <clears throat> over again so now it's going to go down You 
can see how the, the constants work on the PID controller output, or how the solution works. You can see how the solution works on the PID output. All right, everybody, kids are back from school, dogs are barking. That's what I got for you today. It's pretty close to being functional. Now it's time to start polishing and implementing a few more features that I would like to add uh, to make it functional in the way I would like. Um, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, um, and uh, you know, keep in touch with me. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions if you like, and uh, I gotta get going. Thanks.